Hi, my name is Ned Pagic, and in this video I'd like to show you how, by using Caspio in conjunction with Zapier, we can connect our database to third-party solutions to bring their functionality into our Caspio applications. For example, imagine you wanted to do an email campaign capability to your Caspio-powered CRM application. In this video we show you how you can achieve this with a product such as MailChimp. Of course, you will need an account with Caspio, Zapier, and MailChimp to make it all function together. In this video, we'll assume that you already have an account with all three providers. Note that in Caspio, only certain plants have API capability, and this feature is required to make this integration work. Here I have a preview of a sample Caspio built entry form. New customers are added to the database through this form. When data is submitted, we want that data not only to go to our Caspio table, but we also want the data to go to our MailChimp account. Keep in mind that the new record trigger is not only fired off with a form submission, but also with any other way that the data is inserted into the table, such as manually inside a data sheet, through an import, or through other API calls. The first step in setting up Zapier with your Caspio account is to make a new Zap. Zaps are these triggers that get fired when something happens in our database. Our trigger is based on a table that is used in our form, so we'll select Caspio from the list of all the apps on the trigger side. On Zapier, Caspio currently provides three types of triggers. Based on new record, based on an update to a record, and finally when a record is deleted. In this case, we want a new record trigger, which means when a new record is added to the Caspio table, we'll want an action to happen. Now let's select the app to perform the action on. We'll select MailChimp, We'll pick Add Subscribers so that we can add this record to our MailChimp list. Click Continue. Next, let's click to connect to our Caspio account. Give it a title and then make sure you provide the correct Caspio subdomain which can be found under Account Settings inside your Caspio account. To locate this link, go to your Caspio account, click on Account and then click on Account Settings. Copy and paste the subdomain URL from Caspio to the proper field inside your Zapier account. Once entered, hit continue to connect to your Caspio platform. If you're not signed into your Caspio account, you'll need to enter your admin credentials to give Zapier access to your account. If you're already signed in as admin, you'll need to click on allow. Hit continue again. And if you've done everything correctly, you should now be able to see account is working on the right hand side. Next, we'll need to connect to MailChimp, so let's click on Continue to do that as well. Same as with Caspio, if you're already signed into MailChimp, you'll be automatically connected. If you're not, you'll need to enter your credentials. To make sure things are working correctly, let's go ahead and click on Test This Account. Once you're connected to MailChimp, you'll then specify what table you'd like to monitor or use as the trigger table from Caspio. Let's select our customer's table. Here we can also introduce conditional filters. For example, we can select a field from our customer table such as last name, add a condition to match the text exactly, and put a value of let's say Perkins. What this means is when a new record is added to the Caspio table, the only way the data will feed into MailChimp is if the last name Perkins matches up exactly. In this video, we won't make any changes to custom filters, so let's remove it and click on Continue. In order to finish this app, we'll need to fill in some required fields. In MailChimp, make sure you have a list created so that you can select it from the drop-down menu. I called my list Customer Mail List. We'll insert the email field from our Caspio table, so be sure to select the field in the drop-down. Finally, you can fill out some of the optional fields if you like. Let's also configure the first name and then last name so that we can map these fields and insert them into our MailChimp list. When done, click on Continue and let's test the zap before it's finally turned on. You'll see a notification here at the top to let you know that you need to create a new record inside your Caspio table in order for Zapier to recognize it. Let's go to our table and add a sample record directly. We'll add Jim Jones and for email, we'll say jim.jones at acmeapps.com. Once the record is added, return to Zapier and click OK, I did this. Zapier is now going to look for that record in your table, and if it finds it, it'll let you know. Click on All Done. Click on Continue again. 
Now let's give our Zap a name. Let's call it Add Customers to Email List. And let's turn the Zap on. Now that our Zap is officially on, we can start adding records to our Caspio table. And once the record is added, we'll see those records appear in our MailChimp list. Let's test it. We'll add another record inside our table. Say, for example, Kelly Parker. And email will say Kelly dot Parker at acmeapps.com. Once the record is added, we can switch over to our MailChimp account. And depending on what plan you have with Zapier, it could take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes for this record to show up. Once the record shows up, you'll see it appear in your list. We can now create specific campaigns to send marketing emails to our list of subscribers. Through a similar process, you can also integrate your Caspio account with many other services that Zapier provides. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe for any of the latest tutorials, tips, and tricks on how to use Caspio. Visit howto.caspio.com for more how to articles and videos. And if you don't have a Caspio account, get your free trial at www.caspio.com.